Hello transport nerds, I'm at Stockton and tonight is an absolutely beautiful evening. I've just finished work for the day, gone home, popped back over here and just had some dinner at Stockton. And one of the reasons I love Newcastle is the fact that not only have you got a lovely backdrop, across the river you might just very closely see behind me there's a little ferry and that's what crosses the Hunter River. So tonight we're going to go for a bit of a ride on board that. So come and join me for the journey. As the world's largest distribution centre for Christmas presents for naughty children, the port of Newcastle needs easy access to the mouth of the Hunter River. Coal exports have kept Newcastle's economy moving for a long time and building a bridge right across the mouth of the river would likely be too disruptive to export operations and a tunnel under the river would prove extremely costly. This probably explains why Newcastle has a single ferry service that connects Elizabeth Quay to Stockton Wharf, connecting Newcastle CBD to Stockton. Now to be clear, you can drive between Newcastle and Stockton, but the path is best explained by this pretty overused meme format. This is one journey which you probably could miss a ferry, wait for the next one and possibly arrive before you could get there by car. So let's save ourselves around 20 minutes, jump on board the ferry and go for a ride. The Stockton ferry is run by two different vessels, the Hunter and the Shortland. Both of these were built by Carrington Slipways in 1986 and were refurbished in 2018. They are basically a single deck version of the first fleet class ferries delivered for Sydney Harbour services around the same time. This video is filmed on board Hunter, the newer of the two ferries, by one month. Since the service only requires a single ferry to operate, it appears that they just swap them around every month or so. If you go for a walk along the banks of Throsby Creek, you'll see the non-operational ferry waiting around near the Cowper Street Bridge. Once on board, you'll find these plastic and vinyl seats, which are amazingly comfy for a five minute journey. There are lots of good seats on the ferries, but unlike Brisbane City Cats, which have been the subject of many of my prior videos, they don't have a front deck to sit on and enjoy. Fortunately, the windows on these ferries open, allowing for a decent breeze. And if that's not enough fresh air for you, you can pop out to the back deck and enjoy the open air seating. Now seating on that back deck is nothing flash, consisting of aluminium park bench style seats which face towards the back of the vessel. You can tell that these ferries prioritise inside seating, which given the cooler weather in Newcastle compared to Brisbane makes a lot of sense. Let's make our way across the river and take in the sights of Newcastle as we cross the Hunter. on the time of day, you may get a reminder that this river is a busy operational port and it's quite common to see and come across coal export ships, tugboats and cargo vessels while making your way across the river. So I grabbed footage for this review from a few different river crossings because this ferry ride is so short and I wanted to capture plenty of different angles.
Once on the other side, you can see I found the most amazing sunset as a backdrop. And while the sky is illuminated in a gorgeous glow, a tugboat heads back across through the port after helping a coal ship make its way out to sea. I also love the view of the city from Stockton because you see a variety of buildings and architectural styles as well as the hill which I've got to walk up or drive up every day just to get home. Alrighty, so I think I've made a little bit of a mistake on this video. So I forgot to check the timetable before I went and had dinner and started filming. And it turns out that the next ferry is another 50 minutes away. To get from here, this ferry wharf, to across that river. And can I just say that's bit of a bad choice on my part. Um, so I've got to work out, do I spend another hour here, roughly speaking? And I've already had dinner, so it's not like I just go and grab dinner and come back, because I've just done that. Or do I try and make my way back to the other side in another fashion? So as I worked out my options on any trip, let's cut back to the moment when I was joyfully scoffing down dinner and that I hadn't realised I'd just missed the ferry that I really should have caught home. Hey, at least these early April sunsets were something gorgeous. Alrighty, I think I found the solution. It's not particularly elegant, but I think it's going to get me home quicker than waiting for a ferry, and warmer hopefully than waiting for a ferry. So there is a bus due here in a few minutes that'll go as far as Fern Bay. Now I think I can jump on that, head up um, the main drag, get out of Stockton and onto Nelson Bay Road. I think from there I should be able to cross the road and then wait for a 1.30 inbound and head back into town and hopefully get back about the same time as this ferry would get across without sitting out here freezing my cooler off. And sure enough, the 136 rocked up and I just jumped on board. At least this standard issue Hunter Valley Buses Volgren Optimus was nice and warm. Once on Nelson Bay Road, it was time to let the Optimus depart and then cross the road and wait for an inbound 130. After a few minutes of waiting, in the cold, it rocked up and I got on board this Port Stephens Coaches Bus Tech XDI, which got me back to Mayfield where I decided to get off. Alright, so I'm not too far away now. I decided to jump off at Mayfield and I'm just gonna wait for a bus that will get me nice and close to home. So, you know, here's the funny thing. If I waited for the ferry, I would have been home quicker. Simple fact. But at least I've been warmer this time because I've spent the time traveling on a couple of heated slash not full of wind buses. So that's always nice. But anyway, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon.